Inside Heavy, where we're talking heavy metal. Knoxville, Tennessee's very own Whitechapel just released their third studio album, their second on Metal Blade Records, entitled The New Era of Corruption. Whitechapel has become infamous for their masterful performances, their technical abilities, and having three lead guitar players. And we have one of the lead guitarists with us today. Ben Savage joins us in the studio here at Inside Heavy to give us the full backstory to the recording of the new CD and working with a producer that is known for being a wizard in the business. Business, Jason Sukov. So keep your hands off the mouse. You don't want to miss a second of this because we're coming back and talking heavy metal with Ben Savage from Whitechapel. <laughs> fan of heavy music but hate high prices, then go to the Inside Heavy Metal Shop for the best prices on the internet. We have every heavy and hard rock band under the sky. If they're not in our shop, they're not worth a damn. It's the Inside Heavy Metal Shop powered by Amazon.com. with Ben Savage from Whitechapel right here on Inside Heavy, the world's inside source to heavy metal. We're joined on the phone with Ben Savage. He's one of the guitarists from Whitechapel. Ben, welcome to Inside Heavy for the first time. Hello, Evan. Thanks for having me. No problem. You got a fantastic, uh, as usual, fantastic CD out uh, come out June eighth on Metal Blade Records. New uh, the uh, new era of corruption. Give us some insight to the to the CD. Well, it's uh, it's just a continual progression uh, from our past material. I mean, it's just a it's a more mature sounding record. It's a more focused record. It's more it's, songwriting's better. It's uh, I don't know. I think it's a record that uh like an array of fans from the metal genre can get into, not really guys into death metal, metal, hardcore, I mean, uh, you know, just from all across the board, I think uh, everybody could get into it, so, sure. yeah. Now, I've read over and over again, I've read over and over again that uh, the band has artistically progressed. How would you say you have? Um, Just as far as songwriting goes, like uh, when we were, like uh, like our our previous records, it just seems more our previous records just to us seems more like juvenile. It seems more just like uh, we're just trying to like put out all these ideas at once and not really focus in and hone in on our like songwriting. Mm-hmm. So uh, like uh, seems like our previous material seems more like jumbled up, like like more I guess messy, more all over the place. But uh, this sounds more focused and more mature. And uh, I don't know, it just comes with like the the past like two years we've been touring and writing this record and just seeing like all the all these bands we've been on tour with and just been like across across the country and i mean across the world actually Mm -hmm. and uh just seeing kids reactions to like some songs uh now jason sukoff the genius producer he's involved in this program uh what what he bring uh to the table for the the final product Uh, i mean he just brought you know, another another mind into into the band, another like perspective. Um, yeah, he just he just he. I mean, he he helped a lot with like adding you know like textures and stuff and dynamics to the music. And he just he kept. Uh, he's also just like a hilarious guy, so he just kept. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Go. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's also just like a, a great guy, and just he keeps morale high whenever you're in the studio, and keeps it comfortable. And, uh, yeah, he just, he, he tries to get the best takes possible and tries to make, I mean, he, he's out, he's, his goal is to make you a better band. So, right. and I think he, he's helped out with that for us. So, sure. Now, when you say he, Here, when you say he helped add textures and stuff, help someone like me who is not a studio guy understand, what did he do? What kind of textures did he add? Um, just like, uh, just helps out with like uh, just adding, like adding on to the music, like layering and mm-hmm. like uh, like just like you know as far as like, drum drum fills and like uh, little guitar accents, you know, here and there, and like guitar, like like guitar. Um, like he actually did like some solos on the new record, like uh, 
like he's he's also a great guitarist too. That's another thing about him. He can just like write a solo like on the spot and just it be the most greatest thing you ever heard, basically. Sure. So he's just yeah. I mean, that's basically what he did. He just added added more like dynamics to our music. Right now, what songs did he play uh, some solos on? Um, a song of Future Corrupt, which is like track seven, and Necromechanical, which is like track ten. Fantastic. Now, I knew he was a good guitar player. I interviewed Richard Christie from Shard Walls of the Damned. Yeah, yeah, he played guitar on that CD. Exactly. Yeah, he recorded it and stuff. I was amazed to find out that he was actually a good guitar player. I, I, I figured he was probably a musician, but that kind of musician, I mean, that's world-class guitar playing. Yeah, yeah, he's hes amazing. Like, And he'll, like, the greatest part is, like, he'll come up with it on the spot. Like, he doesn't, like, really... You know, like when I write a solo, I do is you know, just like take time and just kind of like map it out, you know, like on the guitar. Like he just grabs it and he just, he knows so many guitar chops that he could just pick up and just be like, okay, this will fit here and just, just shreds over it. And it's just like, and it all fits too, which is great. Right. Now, three of my favorite songs. The first one, Unnerving. I thought that one was a, a cool song because there were some unique things you did there. A synth kind of a, a intro. Um, and I believe there's like an acoustic part in there that I thought was a nice touch. Um, no, the, the acoustic parts in, um, in the flesh track five. Is that right? Okay. But that, those little things like that, I think are, are really classy when a band adds that in there. And I think that shows a depth of maturity as well, but I, I love those little parts in there. Uh, who, who writes those parts or puts those in or is it just everyone have a, a, a a piece Um, of those? I actually, I wrote that acoustic part, um, it just, like, I wrote that acoustic part after I wrote the, uh, the heavy riff, that was like a, the, the riff before it, it kind of has like the same vibe as the acoustic part, so we felt, it just felt natural to throw that in there, and like, it's like, with our band, like, we have like, uh, three guitars, so it's like, a uh, like, usually I write more of like the progressive, like, metal stuff, and you just, I mean, I, I write a lot of the songs in general. But, like, I, I write more of, like, you know, I have, like, more of, like, a progressive metal background, and, like, Zach or the guitarist has, like, a black metal background. It's, like, on, you, you're talking about the strings at the beginning of track six, mm-hmm. and of unnerving the strings, that's all Zach, that's all Zach's take, and then, like, Alex, he's, like, has more of, like, a hardcore background. So sure. it's, like, all that combined just kind of, like, it makes a Whitechapel sound. Sure. Now, speaking of the three guitar approach, it isn't every band that has three guitar players, and uh, does that's got to give you a whole nother depth of what you can do uh, with your instruments. Yeah, as far as like yeah, yeah like like uh, live pulling off our recordings live, and like also adding to the writing process, which is another great thing. So I mean, yeah, I mean, you know. Do you guys share lead responsibilities on just different songs? Like you said, some songs one person writes stuff on, the other person another. Do is is that how it goes, or is there... it's more of just like uh, every man for himself? Like everybody will just write write their own stuff, and then just like if we we just pick out what we like from it, and then just and then just uh, work with it from there. He, like a perfect example of that is like a in the flesh track five on the CD. Mm-hmm. It's uh that's basically a song written by all all three guitarists. So, so it's just like a, it's, a really, it's like a guitar, really, a guitar free for all. In other words, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's not really it's just like guitars everywhere, but I mean, it's right. just like a good, a good scope of like, of like a. It represents the, like the sound, like a lot of influences. There's a lot of influences in that in that song, so it's like mm-hmm. it shows like. I mean, it's a good. I think it's a well written song. So 